First door knock, 2022 in Ohio. Hard no. I literally just saw a freaking giant. I only got a glimpse of him. I just got permission here, and he just went to another place I've got permission at. I just turned around and I saw him maybe 100 yards in the woods and just he just dropped down this hardwood ridge. I don't have that deer on camera. I've had a camera in here all summer. I've, I've not seen that deer on camera. My camera's been dead in here the last like three weeks, and that deer had to have just showed up. That was a freaking, I just got a glimpse of him walking away and it was just, giant holy crap that deer is huge he's like a couple hundred yards away i just crested this little hill just to see if i could get eyes on him again and he just went over this little hilltop unreal that's the camera that's been dead I have a ton of time poured into this area. Basically, since I started door knocking in Ohio last winter in January, this has been a culmination of, of getting all of these lots and permissions that I've got here of several, several trips up here and piecing next piece, next piece, next piece. And honestly, like I wasn't even really planning. I, I almost didn't even come check and redo this camera over here because I just haven't seen something I'm, I'm coming to making these trips to Ohio for. I've still got to lock down the yes. So the, the husband is 100% yes, 100% in. Um, he wants me to come visit with his wife and she's in as well, but he wants her wants me to meet her before I hunt. So I need to talk with him and make sure that I can get everything 100% squared away before I can hunt. But I've still got some work to do to, to, to get in the game on this thing. I like my mind is spinning right now. <clears throat> All right, so I just came back to where I saw the big deer last night. <clears throat> Put one camera out here, another camera on a scrape, basically on this river edge behind me. And this is my first time laying eyes on this place in daylight. Um, I wanted to come back here midday today and at least lay eyes on the place. I cannot hunt here until I talk to the wife. So I've got like three days of time that I can't even, can't hunt here. So I just want to be in here in the daylight, get an idea of where I'm going to put my stand and kind of the best place to, a best way to approach this property. Like I said earlier, I'm hunting breadcrumbs. Um, this property line is tight. <clears throat> it butts up to a big piece of woods, really big piece of woods. And I got permission to retrieve deer from that and another piece. So. As long as he crosses this line, comes onto my place, I should be good. That deer is a tank. Perfect ending to a perfect night. Waffle House. So we just got back <clears throat> from dragging the uh, big 10 that we killed literally a few hours ago. Um, we're gonna get a couple hours of sleep in the car, uh, take this deer to the processor as soon as the sun comes up. And then we are headed to Ohio. I've got a meeting at nine o'clock in the morning um, at a place where this giant deer has been showing up and the, like I said, you guys are aware of this by now, but the husband's cool with it. I just got to meet the wife and get her blessing before we can start hunting this other crazy buck that's at this place. So we're not wasting any time. We are jumping right from Kentucky and this buck trying to keep this momentum going, head right up to Ohio. Think they're home. We might have to come back this evening. 
see. We'll see. Alright. She's in. The last thing I need is written permission from him. He's the property owner. He'll be back here at 5, 5.30, so she said to come back then to get signed official permission, but he's good with it. She was the second piece. She's good with it. All I need is signed permission now, and then we're good to go. And then we're going to be on an absolute monster deer. So, um, Getting this place finalized is going to be the death of me. It's about the hundredth time that we've come up with a new meeting to you know finalize permission um, she said that he got caught up at work so to come back around noon tomorrow take to the putt putt range dang it Ooh. we kind of suck That's trouble. That's trouble. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude, what? Dude, what just happened? You just hit some sort of secret passageway. <laughs> That's BS. Oh, man. My name's Big Al, and I hit dingers. Baseball is 70 miles an hour. Yeah, we're going 70. <laughs> oh! We still got it, baby. Dude. I shouldn't have given it up. Hey, if someone at the brave sees this, <laughs> call out your boy. Besides about throwing up my back, your boy still got it. <laughs> You're up. Oh shoot. I suck at b-ball, man. 70. Don't you dare back off. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think that I think it. I think that I think it. <laughs> oh, shit. <I> <laughs> oh, yeah. You're still out. Oh, just dropped that one. <laughs> How do we feel about it? Definitely not getting a call from the brave. <laughs> I'll shoot you a text so you have my phone number. All right, thank you. Hunter, we're close, buddy. Um, How close? Very, very, very close. She said that, like, we've been trying to play this gentle, like, the last thing you want to do is just annoy someone. And so, like, she's like, no, 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 she's like, I promise you, like, he's excited for you to hunt here. He's you know, part of the deal is they, they're excited to have some venison. And uh, he's like, he's excited to get some venison. He's really excited for you to hunt here. He's like, he's a doctor and his schedule's been crazy. So she was like, I promise you, you have not been bothering him. And she was like, just, he told her to be like, you know, what do you need? And I said, well, I need sign, sign bow hunting permission. So I wrote it out and gave it to her. And she's like, you can, I'll have him sign it tonight when he gets home. And he will, she'll leave it on the front door for us tomorrow so we can pick it up, so. I'm not going to say that we're 100% there, but we're 99.99% there. I'm uh, super fortunate that I've got good friends that let me crash on their couches and things like that. We're pretty uh, homeless at times, but our buddy Kyle Chaney has let us stay at his house. So my buddy Kyle is a professional race car driver, essentially. I'll let him kind of explain a little more, but he has a garage for these things and these things but I think you said they go over 100 miles an hour so if we kill that buck we might have to rip around one of these cornfields in this bad boy as a little celebration he's gonna show us through his trophy room he's got some absolute monsters on the wall so I'll let him kind of get into that give us a quick walkthrough of because I mean like we walked in here last night and this is just like extremely impressive so this is yeah this is ridiculous yeah so uh, this was Ed yeah, this this year's well known. Yeah, well now, known. Just, they did a video on YouTube and it went off. 
This deer's crazy. Yeah, Field and Stream did a, a thing with it. And, um, but yeah, this was a deer I harvested last year. Uh, he was hit by a car uh, or a truck or something, and he was shot the year before. And well, <clears throat> we're gonna get a stand hunt, but I wanted to get a quick walkthrough of all this. This is. I'm telling you, if we do have luck, I want you to give me a little crash course on how to just, you know, driving course on how to zip around one of those race race car truck things. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll trade you that for some information on how to knock on doors and get permission. Done deal. Done deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. There is a cold front coming. I, spoke, I think it's supposed to hit in a couple days. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So I'll kind of, I actually want to look at the weather and see what time it's going to hit. Maybe we will set the morning, but maybe we might, we might, we might get rained out. But hopefully be off of the race the hungriest deer. He is an absolute giant. We're up for our first set at the spot we finally got. And what I think I've figured out with this deer is he's been gone from this spot. I haven't had him on camera in this place for over a week. I had him a picture of him a mile and a half away is the last picture I have of this deer. And it was, it was probably six days ago or so. This deer has a lot of woods he can roam. He's got a river that's got a corridor to all kinds of blocks of woods. I know that I've got another hunter just down the river from me, maybe five, six, seven hundred yards, something like that. And I know four other places that are being hunted on the outskirts of this area. How do I know this? Because I did a ton of door knocking here and I was able to find out sort of where people were hunting. I think that this deer has no issues chilling in someone's backyard. I don't think he's fearful of that at all. And I think it's because he's never experienced any kind of hunting pressure in those places. And so he's hunkering down in a zone that he knows he cannot be messed with. And it almost seems like, cause I've seen this now in a couple different states and a couple different deer, it feels like they're avoiding on purpose the large blocks of woods where they've experienced hunting pressure. If a, you know someone took a picture of this deer standing in their yard, it would be like, oh, where's the challenge? Well, the challenge is that this deer is eight years old. He's been experiencing hunting pressure and he is, he knows these zones where he is safe. So they're unhuntable zones. He cannot be hunted in those places. So we're trying to catch him when he leaves his safety zones on these blocks of woods. And I think with this weather coming that this deer is gonna get fired up. We've got full range predictions from Spartan Forge coming here in the next, uh, I think basically starting tomorrow, Spartan Forge is saying, full range predictions. And I know that this deer is a traveler because I've had pictures of him a mile and a half away from where we're hunting right now. few minutes here I think that uh, we'll probably get down here before too long. Always oh, standing. Alright so he goes and gathers a bunch of like debris. And then he's carrying it back into his little dungeon. See there he is, he's gathering. Yeah, see him? Oh. He's putting it all in his mouth. <laughs> oh, a few more. That is so much stuff. I just saw doves just being like run ragged. So like 
can see their tails. Sir, I saw two tails way down there. Like running, running. Something's definitely chasing them. There's definitely some chasing back over there. Couldn't tell what buck it was, but it's starting to turn on. We're going to climb down here for a bit, grab a bite to eat, and come back. We'll be in this afternoon. All right, we're back in the tree. Another afternoon set. I'm excited. Most of the activity we've been seeing over here has been in the evenings. Sort of clueless as to what he's doing, but I think if we ride it out here enough, he's going to come check these down at some point.
He's gonna go down right there. Oh my gosh. Come on. <laughs> I just finished praying, dude. You know the stuff I've been going through, man. You know what I've been going through. I just told you. I said, man, I'm going to stop and stop, and I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to pray. And just when I looked up that little buck, those two does, and he came in with them. Thank you, Lord. I've had a lot of stuff going on in my life. A lot of stuff. It's been weighing really heavy on my heart. There's just those days where everyone has them. It's just those days where you feel like just the, the world's just working against you. And I think sometimes I've been so freaking busy just going nonstop trying to chase these deer that I feel like I've almost lost sight of the moment, lost sight of what's important sometimes. And today it just all came kind of crumbling down on me and I just I told Hunter I was like man I gotta stop I've gotta stop I've gotta be still and I've gotta be silent I've gotta pray I just I have had so much on my plate and the woods has always been my church it's moments like this that just crush me man he was the buck that was on them this morning. When we saw all those deer running around, I, we never saw him. He was there because he followed him right in this morning. That doe was hot. He wasn't leaving that doe. She sat and peed right here. And then he, you heard, did you get him when he went Bleh! and grunted like that? He almost took, I mean, he was about to take off after that doe. And that's why I had to really stop him. He was behind this tree. I could have shot him for a brief second, but I know you couldn't see him. And then he got behind that tree, and I don't know how long I was at full draw for, but this split tree was in my way. <sighs> well, I, I, I had to let down, but I was waiting for those does to be looking elsewhere. This homeowner, this landowner is going to be so happy. He's going to be so happy to get some deer meat. Let's go see this thing, man. See that little log right there that we had put that ways? That was our boundary marker. And he was standing right here. So very, very, very clearly on our property. And again, we're hunting breadcrumbs here. And sometimes you can feast off a of breadcrumb. Breadcrumbs go a long way. <laughs> uh, I want to drag this deer to our property. I'm not going to bring my bow onto that property because there is no hunting in that city. But here, perfectly legal. And I just want to drag him back onto our property and uh, get to see this thing. <laughs> He's an absolute hammer. Oh my goodness. 
Let me, let me get him over here. Oh my word. That is a stud. Oh my. Unreal, man. I can't believe what I'm looking at. His rack is upside down. It almost makes more sense this way. Beam, G2, G3. This has got to be probably one of the coolest deer I've ever seen in my life. He's a six pointer. I mean, one, G2, G2. Oh my Lord. Thank you, Lord in heaven, for bow hunting whitetail deer. What an absolute giant. <clears throat> the mass is insane. What we have been able to do this season, especially in the last two weeks, with having a deer, our success in Kentucky and then coming up to Ohio, is months and months and months of hard work that has paid off in the off season starting January this past year. I think I've spent at least like in this area of Ohio over a month here and on over the span of probably five or six different road trips, spring, summer, last winter, and all of that is paying off in a huge way. This is the best season of my entire life, hands down. I, I, I can't get enough. This deer's insane. We got to take this back to our buddy Kyle's house, and uh, I think he's going to be pretty, pretty pumped. We got a celebration to do in that, that racing truck tomorrow. I, you might have to put the camera down. <laughs> I'm gonna need some help. <laughs> Something I've also thought about. We're we're on our way. Got the deer loaded up. We're on our way back to Kyle's house to get the deer uh, taken care of. Something that's also, I think, crossed my mind is like I want to be the best steward I can to deer and deer hunting and the outdoors and. I know that we've encouraged a lot of you guys out there, whether it's on public land and thousands of acres or private land, a place that you door knocked and you got a small track. I hope that we've encouraged you guys to get excited about hunting. And I hope that these moments come through the camera and they get you excited about it as much as it excites us. And the other thing I wanna say is like, for those of you guys getting into bow hunting or that's been hunting for a while, like don't, set these unrealistic standards or expectations for your hunt or a buck that you want to hunt if it gets you excited go hunt it it doesn't have to be what's in the back of the truck right now we are super blessed we get to do this full time and spend i'm because of you guys drew and myself and kendall and all of our team involved get to pursue these animals full time 365 days a year and we've committed our lives to it don't put unrealistic expectation or pressure on, your, on yourself that you've got to take some giant deer to have it be some meaningful hunt. It is not has nothing to do with the size of the deer. It has everything to do with the memories and the whole experience. I just wanted to kind of get that out there and make sure that that message was, was brought across clearly to you guys that are watching this video. So, like I said, we're going to get back to Kyle's, get this deer taken care of. I know he's excited to freaking see this thing. Yeah, his rack is definitely upside down. It's literally, his rack is upside down. Is this his main beam? Or is this the main? Which, which, how, which one are you gonna, do you get I pick? really don't know if it's possible for a deer to you be a spread here, scored upside down, <laughs> but like he's literally, I mean, that's the, that's the first thing that everyone has said to me. <laughs> is that this deer looks like he drew his rack upside down. Dude, that's insane. Well, you know what this means, right? means you get to rip around and can't handle more. I didn't even have to say it. He already knew. <laughs> I already knew. <laughs> he already I'm going to have to prep it for you tonight and everything. Well, get her supercharged. I'm ready to oh, dude, she's, she's turbocharged already. 
feel like a different person. You look like a NASCAR racer. <laughs> you ain't first, you're last. Remember that. <laughs> That's right, Ricky Bobby. Good. Oh gosh, I'm like actually getting really nervous now. We're gonna take her slow. <laughs> Best day of my life. That's the coolest thing I've ever talked. Dude, you're natural. Really? Yeah, yeah, you're smoking. I just couldn't help it. <laughs> like you, I just felt it my plums. I just had to hit the gas. Dude, you you're like, we're gonna take it slow, and then you went out there and pulled a donut like the first 30 seconds you were in the car. <laughs> I'm like, so much for taking it slow. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the camera's destroyed. <laughs>